Good morning YouTube, Ian here from Cool Ice Charge Cases and Power Supplies. Uh, as you've obviously come to expect from me every now and then, I'll uh, grab obviously a quick video of my latest charge case build that I'd like to obviously share with you all. Obviously I am quite proud of the cases that I make here, so it's quite nice for me then to obviously uh, produce these little videos and obviously show you uh, the best bits, if you like, in the video, discuss them with you in video, and then of course then at the end, add in photographs as obviously uh, of the creation and the and the build up and the makeup of the case, and in in the outtakes, if you want to call it that, at the end or the credits at the end of this video. Um, so before obviously I ramble away too much because obviously this case is being collected, I think with in in the next hour or two. Um, so I wanted to quickly make this video before it disappeared. This one is um, again a little bit larger case. It's using a silver Nanook 940 case in this instance. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper. The case is obviously a very, very nice case again as well. They are very good quality, these Nanooks. Um, so it's obviously been a bit different. This one, due to, the, due to the physical sizes of this one, it was pretty much on the limits of my CNC router that I've got here. I only had about 12 mil to spare in the y-axis movement of the router on top and bottom so there was uh, not a lot of room so I had to be quite clever and crafty and make sure I'd put it slap bang in the middle of the bed to machine it but it, anyway it did it quite nice um, as per normal with the 10 mil polypropylene decks that I'm machining it's uh, it's coming out really nice it's producing a nice solid uh, strong deck um, onto which then I can mount quite a lot of the components and do a lot more with it uh, this one is housing two PL6s oh, and, a, and a bump controller of course you it's quite nice to have the bump controller in it because that simplifies things and allows you to hide the charges themselves which is good originally we were going to go with a PL6 duo with the bump controller integrated into it but due to uh, some issues at Revo Electric's end they they're still not available until the end of July I think from memory so we went with the separate option of the two PL6s and the bump controller um, I've incorporated a couple of different features into this one. Again, we've got a logo in the lid, uh, in the lid deck, should I say? It's not hide in storage. This one, so the lid, the the lid build is obviously fixed, but the logo that I've produced for it is using a different technique. Again, uh, I was looking for a sp specific look with this logo and I've achieved it I think I'm quite pleased with the the outcome of it which I will try to show you in video sometimes it's very difficult with the lighting and everything else but I should be able to highlight that and also in some of the photographs again you'll see at the end of the video side of things in the slideshow you'll see the look so I'm quite pleased with that in the lower deck then due to the space that we have available to us I've created a storage compartment again with the uh, push latch lid on top of that and then into the lid itself, I've built in a wireless charger for a mobile phone. Some of the photos you'll see at the end, and indeed some of you that have obviously watched and or subscribed to the videos that I post, you will have noticed the wireless charging PCB that I posted a couple of weeks ago. In the end, I haven't gone with that one. Um, basically, I wasn't happy with how finicky it was where the mobile phone was placed on that charger I don't know whether it's just a byproduct of the product itself not being all that great or it's just a little bit too fickle but in any case I was faffing around trying to put the charger here there and everywhere and various orientations and it just wouldn't charge so I can't have that in one of my charge cases I, I wouldn't even use that myself so I wouldn't no way in hell sell that on or put that into a build going to someone else so that idea was scrapped and I found another option which I think has actually worked out really well. Um, it's managed, I've managed to then create again quite a nice neat installation of it. Um, originally I had to cut a slightly bigger hole to get the USB lead in because obviously I couldn't shave it down any further but then I had to remachine the lid for the storage door because the original one, the plastic I used for it was, wasn't flat. And again, I wasn't prepared to let that go out the door with it not being as flat as possible. So I machined it again. And in doing so then, by that time, I'd also purchased separate micro USB connectors onto which then I soldered my own wires and uh, then obviously managed to make the installation even neater. So I was quite pleased that I'd done it again. 
But anyway, without further ado, let me turn this camera around and uh, I'll start showing you the case. So here we go, in all its glory, we've got a Nanook 940 silver. It's actually quite a nice silver, actually. It's not shiny. It's not particularly fully matte either, but it's obviously got the it's obviously got the mottled finish to it, which is good. So it works quite well. Not too much to see on the outside, apart from, like my, some of my other builds, we've got the charger outputs on the side. So this one obviously follows on from the one I made on the last case for George Jones, but instead of having a Super X, we've got the same four mil banana connection points as found on the front of the Revo Electrics chargers there. And then of course then we've got my little balance board built in. So you've got the, the original JST PA connection for the MPA board and then you've got the matching nine pin JST XH connector up top. So that allows flexibility then when it comes to balance boards. So that'll be charger one or whichever the customer decides, but I'm gonna go with charger one on the left and then channel two, the right hand side charger then on the right hand side. So that's quite good. No AC connections on the side. I've created that on the deck. So let's lift the lid and let's get inside. And as you can see, there we go, that's the overall look of the case as you open it up, looks quite neat, minimal really, I mean we could have we could have perhaps tried to squeeze in a few more features on the lid build maybe, but then you start to overdo it perhaps if you start to go too far, but there's always options there then to add other features there, so let's start with the lower deck. We've got the uh, IEC connection top left, flanked there on the right hand side then by the twin USB port. I had to remove the the, the, the rubber flap on this one. Turns out then that there wasn't quite enough room then between the lid build when, it, when the lid was closed. So I could perhaps go take that back a little bit deeper on then in future cases that I build. But because obviously this is inside the case, it doesn't need the dust cover anyway, because it's not needed. If you've got the lid open and you're using it, you've got the dust cover up. So, and if it's not needed and the lid is closed, it's protected. So, we've got the cooling fans again. I've gone for slightly bigger radial fans on this one. The reason being, because obviously I've got the storage compartment at the front. I was not necessarily fearful as such, but I was more conscious to make sure we had a lot more cooling air flowing. So, I've gone for the bigger, uh, I think these are the 930, 9030s radial fans. So, again, same principle as before. I've got the recess, I've got the grill, uh, the, the, the mesh then sprayed black, which is sat in the recess. I've then got a 3D printed um, square or rectangular ring that holds the mesh in place. And then I've got the 3D printed brackets that are obviously 90 degrees. They, they bolt to the bottom of the deck and then obviously then go down and obviously then support the fan. So it just obviously comes up. The way I've worked it out, you'll see from some of the photos later, the PL6, you've got one PL6 here one pl6 then on this side then with the fan and the idea with the fans is they are directly they are within about an inch of the fan the inbuilt fans on the back of the pl6 so basically the pl6 then will obviously take any cooling air that comes into the case here the pl6 will suck that in from underneath it will obviously go past the, its internal heat sink and then get thrown out the back straight into the radial fan and this was shown last night actually because obviously i've only got the i've got one pl6 which i've bought from my best mate at some stage, I'll perhaps either have to pay him for it or give him give him it back. But don't tell him I've still got it. He might have forgot he is old. <laughs> Sorry, Ian. Um, but anyway, last night when I was testing the charging, obviously I could feel the, the air was warmer as it was coming out because I charged the battery up and then used the PL6 to discharge it then afterwards back to storage voltage for me. So that's working quite well. I'm quite pleased with that. And they're not too obnoxious with the sound still either. Yes, they're a little bit more audible than the 7530s that I've used before. But they're still not out of this world to listen to, which is good. So across the front, got my usual air slots in. I had to miss the middle one because that's got some bits there. So I missed the middle one out. So four on this side, four on the other, which is normal. And then obviously we've got the storage door. I've taken to using these plastic hinges. I quite like these hinges myself, actually. They look quite nice. And I've recessed them into the deck. So that looks quite nice as well. So they're not protruding too far up. The only thing that is protruding is the actual hinge part, which is good. So I'm quite pleased with that. It works quite well. So I think we're going to stick with this. So 
the storage door is there and, and the eagle eyed among you obviously will notice then this is the wireless charger so again that is sunk in uh, yeah it's worked out really well actually i just i looked for an alternative compared to the the bare naked pcb that i had before and this one worked well so literally i've cut a circle i've cut obviously a relief on the inside then for the usb lead which you'll see in a minute that i made up so let me press it obviously it springs up can then obviously flat back so and there we go so i've just literally i could have machined it but i used the 3d printer so i've created a 3d printed plate there which obviously is double-sided the uh, wireless charger is double-sided onto that that's then secured in with m5 bolts and obviously in the lid i've got my usual brass inserts in there i quite like those in the plastic and then that's the lead that i created a bit difficult to see but i just got i just got to obviously bare connectors micro usb soldered the two pit soldered the two wires on a little bit of heat shrink with obviously the glue line style as well so when i shrunk it on it's obviously got the glue which has obviously got into all the between the wires and everything else and created nice a nice solid joint so then that obviously just comes here that is disconnectable as well so if there's any problems with that wireless charge we can obviously just take it out disconnect the lead replace it put another one back in and away you go then obviously i just the lead then i create the channel again in the door which obviously brought it around and then i've filled it with hot glue and then just gone over it with a scalpel so it's just with, sorry, with a, a stanley blade so it's just cut it flush i could have perhaps covered this in some vinyl but i think that looks quite neat shows what's going on there and then obviously the lead then just wraps around so obviously as it opens and closes with the door it's quite good we've got the usual spring loaded cats there i've gone for a slightly smaller one I've got two types of this one. This is, a, I think they call this one a cabinet push latch. So it works quite well. Put it down and it's done. And the wireless charger works quite well. So I've used it with this phone as well. And you can have it in a few more orientations compared to the PCB. So that's the, the, the PCB one. So that's quite handy. So let's move on. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously we've got my usual cable chain. I quite like this way. I'm, I'm pleased I started to use this. It works quite nice. It looks good. So we've got the 10 by 20 cable chain, and obviously I created another holder then for this particular build, which will then which will then be used on other builds as well, no doubt. So that obviously holds that. So in this case, then we've got obviously power wires then going to power the bump controller, which obviously you've noticed above this, and then obviously in this one, the two signal wires going from the bump controller to the chargers, which have obviously ferrite chokes on either end as well and again i've got little 3d printed holders for those which i'll show i've got one here on my bench actually so i think this is for the seven mil style so there's these holding the uh they're like little clips little 3d printed clips you can see the ferrite chokes around so they click within that and held, are held in place quite nicely and tightly which is good so they don't bang around on the back panel so bump controller there obviously i, I leave the screen protector on until it's in the customer's hands up to the deck the upper deck we've got four fixing points again you'll see from the photos how i've done this there is mounting points in the deck oh sorry in the lid um so i created uh spacers which allow a self-tapping screw to go through one end for a three and a half mil hole from memory and then at the other end i then created obviously a slightly bigger hole again these were 3d printed i created then a slightly bigger hole at the back end into which then I could screw the M5 brass insets I quite like on the on the putting into my decks, so that then I can mount the the the, the post the, the supporting post with a small screwdriver through the M5 insert first using a small flat bladed screwdriver I can secure the the standoff to the case, do that for the four corners four points and then with a the deck in place then I can screw the M5 bolts and then they you'll see uh screw into the m5 insert so that worked quite well that'll probably make a bit more sense when you see the photographs at the end and then the logo he wanted revo electrics so there was two options with this one i could either try uh the painted and cnc routed route which is how i was going to go originally then i started to see a couple of people on the um laser and cnc forums were creating signs out of acrylic that were stepped so i've had a go doing the same so this is made up of three parts. Obviously the, the opal white background is one layer, which obviously then has 
the lettering cut out but slightly undersized. On top of that then, using the laser, I created uh, a jigsaw pieces, if you like. So you can just about see, and the photographs later will show, there's a two mil spacer there cut from clear acrylic, and that is hollowed out as well. So that's obviously got a two mil uh, width to it, or two mil thickness to it, and height. So I bonded that onto the white acrylic first, with obviously the acrylic cement. So that was there first. And then use the laser again then to cut the Brevo Electrics lettering and used obviously red for the leaves in the middle. Again, they're all supported on the two mil thick clear. Now the idea of this is to create a, a sort of light path, if you like. So I want to try and promote light to come out from the clear acrylic between the lettering and the white. So it kind of creates like a halo glow around the lettering. And it's, producing that kind of look. So as soon as I turn it on in a minute, we get my lead. We'll see if we can obviously show that to you on video. It's probably not gonna to do too much because obviously the, uh, the there is no charger in there. So the bump controller is gonna boot up as normal and then complain, yep, yeah, connect me up to a charger because I can't feel anything, that's fine. But ah, there you go, you can see the logo, which is quite nice very very difficult to catch it on camera and video but there you go you can see the the kind of look that it's achieving and I'm really really pleased with it when you look at it in person the the, the letter basically has this light glow around it so each letter has this light glow around it it's, it's worked out really nice and it was actually surprisingly nice to make as well I was expecting it to be quite fiddly and while it was um, a little bit time-consuming laying each letter because each one of these letters was then obviously for want of a better word glued on by hand one by one so obviously I was visually aligning them myself by eye but the effect at the end of it is actually quite nice so what I've done here I've got two LED strips one at the top one at the bottom and they're actually facing backwards into the case and I've wired them in um, series because obviously we've, I'm, I'm actually pulling 24 volts from the bottom of the case so there were two 12 volt strips I've wired them in series so obviously they can take the 12 volts so they can obviously take the 24 volts sorry between them so basically the two LED strips are firing to the back and then I've used uh, some holographic silver vinyl that I have as like a mirror I was either going to use a mirror vinyl or I thought I tell you what I've got some of this holographic which I've done and that is what's actually creating again it's very difficult to catch it but you can see almost like the the, the light diffused it's kind of like a rainbow sort of color behind this translucent red and that is basically what you're seeing you're seeing the the LED reflection on this holographic which almost looks like a rainbow color for those that fly model helicopters for example I've done it myself as I've cut it for many people you can get like the blade tape that sticks on the blades and when you look at it in the sun it changes colors it's almost got a rainbow color and then when in when in flight on the blades and the, the blades are moving about through the air and obviously it's catching the light at different angles you see it glow in all these different rainbow colors that's exactly the same material at the back of this case that is acting as a reflector so if I get it just right actually you can see but I'm really pleased with that. So again, obviously the photographs at the end will say that this obviously deck plate is recessed. So obviously the, the actual logo itself is created of a rect, overall is a rectangular shape in there. And there's obviously six, six small self-tapping screws just securing that in place to the back of the 10 mil thick polypropylene main deck. And then of course then behind it, it's all open. So that's obviously creating light and throwing it all around which is quite good and again you get a very very where there's obviously the very minute gap around you do also get the little light bleed from the outside which has a quite a nice little effect as well with a halo sort of effect but that logo looks good I'm really pleased with that So this will be quite nice. It's going to be really nice. The, the uh, stories as well, that's been created. 
obviously that was from a box section obviously I've created a box with locating tabs you can just about see the locating tabs again the laser is perfect for this sort of thing so I've created the locating tabs and then obviously created the box and used uh, acrylic welding cement then to obviously cement the joints in and that literally just melts and fuses the acrylic together so that's obviously held in and then I've got you can see the two bolts there the two bolts there I've got uh, 3d printed right angle mounting bracket strategically located around the outside to obviously hold that in place so then that'll clip back down the only thing missing which I'm going to do now before obviously I put it in the cardboard box before it starts its journey to its owner is put the deck securing screws so I'm going to do that as well and then it's done it's going to go to its new owner Adam he's going to get it he's going to put his two PL6s in there he's going to make the connections from the chargers to the power supplies and to obviously the uh, the bump controller itself refit the deck power it up and he's going to be hopefully as happy as I am with this build because I am really pleased with this one. It's quite nice. And then in time, I'm also looking forward to trying another option with this logo, the way this logo is created and trying to create other ones the same, using the same technique. That's better. Sometimes when you're just at the right sort of distance away from it, you see the effect a lot better. It's very, very difficult to show it. But anyway... Enough of my ramblings. I'd like to take this opportunity obviously to thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching the ugly bloke again at the beginning of it. I do like to get my little bit of talking in first so I can guide you guys through it. Thank you for watching. Please come back again and subscribe, like, share. Come visit me for all your charging needs. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.